now we'll talk about the process capability okay we will talk about how to calculate the uh, uh, measurement system analysis as well uh, but let's talk about how is the process capability determined process capability for discrete data is different and process capability for continuous data is different okay so that's why this discrete and continuous has to be very very clear to all of you we'll try to complete the discrete today and then we will resume with continuous tomorrow okay so as you all know discrete data is a one which has number of employees different business units count pass fail nominal ordinal and continuous you all already know that you know which can be uh, infinitely looking at so let's look at discrete data uh, the process capability before i get into before i get into the types of uh, uh, how to calculate process capability for discrete and continuous what do you what comes to your mind what do you think the meaning of process capability here let's think about uh, what is your understanding about process capability whether the process is stable within certain limit of okay any specific data now given specific data. okay so that's that's the that's the right definition whether whether my process is capable enough to meet the customer requirement and second what is my current specification what is my current process capability okay we can we can try answering these two questions with the help of process capability first whether my process is good enough to calculate or to uh, meet the customer specification and what is my current process capability measurement that is what we would be able to do it in the measure phase in absence of the required process capability in that case we would look at the process design altogether so we will talk about that also uh, that what to do uh, in that case when our process capability is not good enough which is not as per the standard uh, but first we will talk about how to calculate the current process capability okay so in case of a discrete sort of a data we look at two measurement one is defect and another is defective let's understand the difference between defect and defective here uh defect is something wherein for a, for if you are using any one particular service or if you are using a one particular product in that particular product there is only one feature which is not particular working okay which which is not very very critical to me i can still say it's a past product but i can still complain that this is a defect as per my requirement i still accept your product but it is it is something which i would still call it a defect so i would require certain maybe a compensation or maybe certain discount that is defect defective is that one particular parameter which i am aiming at which is not meeting my requirement if that is not there then i would consider the entire product as defective so for example if my customer has asked me to uh produce 1000 business units 1000 units and i said these 1000 units needs to have 90% quality and 10 days turn around time for me quality is more important than anything else okay they delivered within 5 days instead of 10 days they, they delivered it quickly but the quality which they gave me is 80% or maybe not meeting my requirement then in that case me as a customer will say it's a defective i will not buy it i will not accept it i would consider it as a defective but on the other hand if they would have given me 100% quality and taken 15 days i would not call it as a defective i would call it as a defect okay so defective is when the entire product goes for a toss it's a fatal thing for me i will not accept it defect is there is one particular feature or a characteristic which is not meeting my requirement but i would still accept it saying it's a defect so that's what the difference of defect and defective is any question between defect and defective okay so it's very simple i think uh, we have understood it now we will talk about some of the process capability measures which is dpu dpo and dpm 
DPU stand for defects per unit. DPO stand for defects per opportunity and DPMO stand for defects per million opportunity. Okay. With the help of these three terminologies, I would be able to look at that. What is my current process capability? And then I'll be able to calculate the Sigma level as well. Okay. So the formula for defects per unit is very simple. Defects divided by total number of units. So if I take an example here, my total number of defects is 100 and my total opportunity is 500. Okay. So out of 500, there are 100 defects. So how to calculate DPO? Very simple. It is defects divided by opportunity. So my DPO is equal to 0 0.2. Okay. Now if I want to calculate DPU here, which is defects per unit. So let's look at the definition of uh, the formula for defects per, uh, sorry, we have calculated DPU here, right? So defects per unit, because these are the number of units. So out of 500 units that I produce, I found 100 defects. So this is DPU, zero. But if I want to calculate DPO, defects per opportunity, the formula that I have, defects per opportunity is equal to defects divided by total number of opportunities. Okay. And where total opportunity is equal to total number of units into opportunities. Okay. So let's, let's, let's discuss that. So let's say I have 10 defects and opportunities that I have is five. Total opportunity would be 10 multiplied by 5 because there are 10 defects and each and there are five opportunities. So five transactions I'm monitoring. Okay. In every of the transaction, there are 10 defects. So my total opportunity becomes 50. Okay. So we wanted so, the units into opportunities rather than defect into opportunities, the total opportunity. If there are 10 units and each unit has got five opportunities, then the total number of opportunities would be 50. Okay. Yes, that's correct. It is units here. And let's consider a defect S. Okay. So I have five defects. Okay. And I have 10 units and each unit have five opportunities, which means there are 50 parameters on which I am measuring that how many defects that I have here in this, this example, I didn't have any opportunity. It was very, very simple. hundred units, hundred defects, 500 units. So calculating DPU was very, very simple, which is defects divided by units. But here I have opportunities also. Okay. So, so total opportunity is equal to 10 multiplied by five, which is 50. So here, if I want to calculate DPU, I will divide five into total opportunities. Here my DPU would be 0 0.1. So that would be your DPU. So the difference between here is that I didn't have any sort of opportunities here. It is only pass fail. My customer is very, very demanding says that out of 500, if all of them are good to go, I will take it here. Every unit that we have has certain opportunities. Okay. There are certain things that the customer looks at. Okay. Wherein there are five. So total opportunities becomes total unit into opportunities 50. So my DPU is 0.2 and my DPO is 0 0.1. So this is where I can see that in, 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 uh, uh, in total units that I have, what is my current DPU rate and what is my current DPO rate. Okay. So we'll talk about tomorrow 
in detail that how to calculate the process sigma level with the help of DPU and what is uh, and with the help of DPO uh, in the in the tomorrow class.